Good morning, good morning, Providence family and our Facebook family near and far. We appreciate you for joining us this morning. So glad that you were able to take a moment to scroll by and log in for Sunday School this morning. We appreciate you. We want to start out with prayer this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you for life, health, and strength. God, we give you glory for all things that you have done. Thank you for the 8 a.m. prayer on the conference call this morning, Father, and how it has lifted us and you sent your word to lift us. Father, we just give you glory. We give you praise. And God, we say now that you would stretch out your mighty hand, O oh God, upon us here. Lord, as we set up for worship, O oh God, and as we delve into your word, God, that you would, O oh God, touch the hearers, O oh God, allow them to receive, O oh God. Let the word sink deep into their hearts, O oh God, that we would be able to walk out and sow into the marketplace, O oh God, that what you have fed us today. And it's in Jesus' name we pray all things. I decrease as you increase. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. So our lesson today, our lesson today is um, God's plan revealed. God's plan revealed. We're talking about our um, end. This is the last part of the story of Joseph in Egypt. This is the last part of it. Genesis chapter 45. If you have your um, Bible or need to go to the scripture, it's Genesis chapter 45. The Bible truth today says that God positions Joseph in Egypt to provide food for his family during famine. The memory verse says that now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. That's your memory verse today. The lesson aim says by the end of this lesson, we will evaluate Joseph's response to his past mistreatment of his brothers. We will express faith that God is at work in difficult circumstances and react to mistreatment, not with vengeance, mm -hmm. but with creative transforming initiative. I believe, I do believe that that is probably one of the most um, challenging things that we will need to face after this lesson is uh, fixing the way we react, fixing the way we react to the mistreatment of others without vengeance. We know here in the 2020 that we have had, we as a uh, African American culture, black people have had some continual mistreatment. And there are some people that are reacting with vengeance. Mm -hmm. and not only that, there are um, some of us who we are uh, bubbling over and wanting vengeance. And as saints of God, we just cannot react that way. Amen. We just cannot act that way. And so it's saying that we will uh, find creative and transforming initiatives. And I know that that comes in grassroots initiatives where we get together in our community groups and we talk about how to transform you know, this society and the things that are going on. But I'm here to tell you, it's not just a one hit a quitter. You got to keep trying and keep thinking and keep working. Just like walking this Christian walk, it's a daily sacrifice, a daily practice, a daily work. You have to get up every morning and you have to decide that there is something that I have to do and I'm going to do it to the glory of God, maintaining my image and maintaining the name of the Lord. And so we go in here to our um, Genesis 45 and we look at some of these. Uh, I want to I want to look at some of the key verses here because these 45 minutes go quick. Mm -hmm. These 45 minutes go quick. So we look at um, the story here of Joseph. Um, talking about God's plan revealed, we look at uh, 
Let me, I'm sorry. Let me go to the introduction. And so it says, faithful Joseph receives God's blessings. Joseph honored God in every situation, whether it was suffering or success. By living obediently, Joseph demonstrated his faith in the one true and living God. Potiphar's wife tempted Joseph with sexual sin, but because Joseph was determined to honor God and not dishonor Potiphar, he did not yield. Let me say that again. Joseph was determined to honor God. And let me encourage you today, saints, you have to be determined that you are going to honor God. That's Amen. what I was just saying. And he didn't want to dishonor Potiphar. He didn't yield. That was Genesis chapter 39 and 9. Although God had given Joseph the ability to interpret dreams, Joseph, all, um, Joseph always gave God the credit for being able to do so. Genesis 40 and 8. He didn't brag about the fact that he interpreted dreams on his own or that it was his gift or his special cause. He knew and said that it was of God. And so even when he was before Pharaoh, Joseph attributed his gift to God. When asked to interpret Pharaoh's dream, boldly, Joseph boldly told Pharaoh that there would be a specific number of years of plenty. Then famine would surely follow, Genesis 41, 14 to 36. Because of Joseph's faithfulness, God elevated Joseph to second in command in all of Egypt. God blessed Joseph with the family, and Joseph named his son Manasseh, which means forget, to forget. This child was Joseph's reminder that God helped him to forget his sorrow. Amen. In today's lesson, in today's lesson, Joseph reveals his identity to his brothers and acknowledges that God is responsible for sending him to Egypt. Joseph's entire family relocates to Egypt after many years. When Israel dies, Joseph reassures his brothers that God had ordered his steps for the good of everyone. Amen. And so we must know then, as this story unfolds, there are some key verses that I want to bring out. We want to look at God revealing the plan, God re revealing his plan. I looked at this as a uh, parallel to our life lesson as when you are getting uh, disciplined by your parents, when your mama or your daddy has to give you a good whooping. I thought about how these steps really reminded me of that. Now, I was a child who got a lot of books. <laughs> and so, of course, when you as a teacher or a preacher, you tend to pull out of your direct life experiences. Mm -hmm. And so we look at uh, verse 1 here, because there's quite a few verses in this lesson. There's 15. I won't take time to read them all. When We're going to look at how... Uh, Joseph as the king, how he cleared the room, how he cried, mm -hmm. how he called his brothers close, how he confirmed with them the past and the present, how he clarified the cause, and then how he consoled them. Mm -hmm. And then, and only then, could he have a conversation. Okay, so we're going to go through that. So let's look at verse 1. Verse 1, I'm going to read verse 1 through uh, 8, verse 1 through 8 only. So it says, then Joseph could not refrain himself before all them that stood by him. And he cried, cause every man to go out from me. And there stood no man with him, while Joseph made himself known unto his brethren. And he wept aloud, and the Egyptians and the house of Pharaoh heard. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came near, and he said, I am Joseph your brother, whom he sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, 
For God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years hath the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earring nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Look at verse one and where he cleared the room. Parents, as we have to bring our, uh, walk, you know, as we come upon a time of discipline for our children, we know that we don't just break out giving them a spanking in front of everybody. We don't just go out in the street. Now, some people will do it. It's something on Facebook where the parents will go out in the street and, and pull the strap out on them and start whooping them in front of everybody. Right. And we find that oh, hilarious. No but at a good mother, if you're in the house, they're going to tell you to go to the room. Mm -hmm. They're going to tell you to go to the room or they're going to send your sisters and brothers outside. And y'all go on outside and the other one, you stay in here yourself in trouble. <laughs> And I saw when Joseph cleared the room, mm -hmm. he didn't want that shame to come to his brothers. He cleared the room. And he knew this was about to be a serious unveiling or revealing, which is our blessing word here. He knew that. He said, okay, I need to straighten some things out. The rest of y'all get out of here. And he did. He sent them out, which was nice. Because y'all know we come to a point sometimes when we have to confront people. We sometimes break out and we get them straight and we don't care who we're around. That's right. Mm -hmm. But when they come up, it come up. It's like a pin popping a balloon or a pot boiling on the stove. The pot don't care if a child nearby. If it's ready to boil over, it's going to boil over. And whoever's standing by, you either going to get spilled on or whatever. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right. Hot grits don't have no eye. They just what? Just pop. And that, 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 it don't matter. But Joseph cleared the room. He was very good to them. Very good. And so um, he began to cry. It says in verse 2, he wept aloud. The Egyptians in the house of Pharaoh heard him. That's a serious cry. That's a serious cry. He cried that the whole house heard him. And I can imagine back in those days, it wasn't just a house of four rooms. It was probably more of a castle, mm -hmm. a huge mansion type multiple room facility. They heard him. That's like me being right here and you hear me in the parking lot crying from this church and we have a large facility. And so he wept aloud and the Egyptians heard him. I could imagine standing on the outside and that was my ruler. The first thing I would do would be to run in. Mm -hmm. Maybe not say anything, but at least run in to lay eyes on them and see what happened. But it didn't say they did that. And so as a person being already isolated, the room was clear and I'm standing here. And I really don't know this ruler. And I'm wondering why is he crying? Immediately, I would be like his brothers. I would be troubled at your presence. Verse 3, and Joseph said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. But he called them close. So one thing about it is that when you're about to get a whooping, you as a mom or a dad, you know, we go off and cry after it's over because we say, this going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. Amen. Or we'll say, I don't want to do this. Mm -hmm. You making me whoop me. That's it. Because of the actions that you've taken. And we inside as a parent, it hurts us. It makes us sad to have to whoop our children. Because we think for some unknown reason that they really should not have been at this point anyway. You really should not have done what you did to even get to the point of needing a whoop. But yet we weep on the inside. That we know we've got to take physical means and actions against our children for the sake of breaking them and letting them know that serious consequences are at hand. And so we call them close. 
there's some, uh, well, I, we don't think we do this now, but uh, in the day, the older mothers, they would call you, they say, come here. Because I would stand all the way across the, the right. furthest corner of the room when I was getting older. Right. And my mom would say, come here. Don't make me chase you. Don't you run. Chase you. Come here. You would get called in. And knowing you was already in a small room, you had to walk into the switch. My God. And Joseph said, come here. He called his brothers unto him. And that was verse 4. Joseph said unto his brothers, come near to me, I pray you. Now, crying king or crying ruler, somebody in authority, weeping that loud, calling you close to them. You don't know if they get ready to slash you, gash you. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know what's getting ready to happen. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine how troubled they were and probably nudging each other, probably standing so close with Dorothy and uh Dorothy and the lion and the uh the the uh scarecrow. the the what? The scarecrow. the scarecrow and them. You know how they stood on the Wizard of Oz. Everybody was close together every time <laughs> every time the Oz made his loud noise. I can imagine that that's probably how those brothers were all tight together, wondering what in the world was getting ready to happen. And so in verse 5, we looked at, we, Joseph had to confirm the past and the present for identity's sake. For identity's sake now. You know, they still didn't know at this point who in fact he really, really was. Because see, you know, earlier in your background scripture, he had already confused them by saying, now go get your brother. So he already one element of surprise and then, you know, dismay is like, what? Huh? Who? Well, do what the man said. We hungry. Mm -hmm. And they had to go back and do what the man said. So they still confused at this point. All these steps, this long drawn out path to revealing the plan. They, I mean, gosh, that's just something to me when I look, think about that picture. So he clara confirmed the past and the present. He went on and said, yes, I am your brother. Mm -hmm. But not only am I telling you that I'm your brother, let me go on down to verse 5 and say, I'm the one you sold into slavery. So at that point, I'm going to assume that the brothers had just a little bit of relief. Like, this is him. And I can imagine the tears dried up immediately. And they were like, now going into not just maybe confusion or a little bit of weirdness, but now that shame creeped in. Mm -hmm. And it was like, okay, the tides are turning here. And so as parents, on the life level, we have to remind the children of the past. And we say, I brought you into this world. Mm -hmm. They sure would say that. And I can take you <laughs> I carried you for nine months. I'm the one who saved you from your daddy whooping you the last month. Mm -hmm. And you going to do me like this? We go on down and call the road with them. You have to remind them to bring back some identity of who you really are. Because mm -hmm. he just beating them and leaving them. Mm -hmm. Don't do you no good. Mm -hmm. They have to be reminded that you are mom. Mm -hmm. You are dad. And Joseph did this for them. I am your brother. Mm -hmm. That one you left down now in the pit. That one you sold mm -hmm. to the slave. Yep, you sold me in the slave. That's me. Now, guess what? The present. He confirmed the present. And he started talking about the famine. The current day famine. Mm -hmm. Okay? And it said in verse 6, for these two years has the famine been in the land. And yet it's five more in which there won't be no harvest. Number 7. Verse 7, and God sent me before you to preserve you and to save your life. As parents, we do that. We tell them, we say, now you did this thing and you're going to get a whoop. I got the whoop now. Said, and we'll tell them. We'll say, well, now, from this point on, and then we'll start telling them what their punishment may be after the whooping. You're going to turn that phone in. 
And you not you gonna be in by nine and you going to bed at nine thirty. And now that's the present. That's the present. Mm-hmm. You're still in trouble. Mm-hmm. But this is what's getting ready to happen. And then we'll tell them when it's time to eat, you're gonna be at the table on time. You're gonna eat on time and you're going to bed early. And so these steps that we take, we in the flesh as people, parents take. We feel like, now I shouldn't have to come back this way no more than you. Mm-hmm. We should be fine. And all ground should be clear. Oh, it help us. That's what we think. <laughs> we think. It help Amen. us. That's what we think. That's what we think. And so, <laughs> Joseph, he told him what was getting ready to happen. And he said, now, one more thing. Oh, let me go back. He consoled them. Verse, I'm sorry, verse 8. He clarified the cause. He said, okay, verse 8. So now, it was not you that sent me here, but God. Amen. He had made me a father to Pharaoh. And so he said, now, let me clear up in your thinking while you going into shame. And now I done told you who I really was and you know who I am. He said, now... Don't get the big head. You had nothing to do with this, really. All those actions were the plan of God. Amen. And he, as we said in the introduction, he always gave credit back to God. That's right. Always. And I know sometimes as we are preachers and teachers and even in operate in the prophetic, we people say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And they give us offerings. And da, 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 da. It's not us. And we always Amen. say, to God be the glory. Yes. We do. We were up here at Drive Through Prayer and people wanted to pay off and then we told them said that ain't what we're here for. Mm-hmm. That's not what we're here for, but thank you. Because they kept saying, Let me, let me, so I got it. And so we said, Okay, to God be the glory. Mm-hmm. And we accepted their offering, did we not? We did. And that's what we have to do so that we as vessels of God don't get lost. Amen. That we don't get absorbed in self glory. Okay, we have to give glory back to God. The cause of our existence, the cause of our suffering, and then the cause of our deliverance. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It is God that delivers us from these times. And so verse 9, he began to console them. Verse 9, it says, now go on, go on, go to your father. And say to them these words. Thus said thy son Joseph. God made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me and tarry not. And you have to think. That now the father was getting ready to go through these same steps. The father was about to experience. As God was bringing this plan up to the boiling point. That the daddy now had to say. I'm ashamed. Why is the king this man of authority calling me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to cry. He's going to cry when he sees his son. Mm -hmm. He's going to go through a little shame because he's going to probably feel like, why didn't I search for my son all these times? Things that we go through when we reconnect with people, you know, why didn't I call him? Why didn't I find out? You know, he's going to go through all these things in his head. But the plan of God, again, remember, is not so much to shame you, but to bring you into a place of remembrance and revealing that he is uh, the cause of all things and we should cooperate with his plan in the end. Not knowing, but cooperate anyway. And so it says, uh, go up to my father. And then they brought the, you know, uh, they ended up bringing the father in, but basically he told him, said, now go tell them that Joseph said, Joseph said, and that's what we do as parents after we get through this kind of kids. If we got to send our kids out, we'll, you know, we'll leave them a day and the next day and we'll say, now, the next time such and such happen, you tell them, I said, don't do that no more. I said, you not staying down there to 10. I said, you coming home to eat. We have to put that stamp on some things for people because the world is not going to believe. They don't believe so easy. They're not moved so easy. Especially if you're going to tell your daddy to leave where you at and come move up here with this 
other person who say he your son when you knew your son been dead? So he had to put that stamp on it. And that's what God does for us. He puts that stamp on us and we can take this Holy Bible. We can take his words and we can go and move in authority when we're witnessing to go transplant those lives and bring them into a land of harvest. We can say, God say, we can say, Jesus loves you. Now come up from where you are into the land of plenty. It's not going to be easy. But yet you have the power, the stamp of that seal that they will know, wow, I heard about that God. Yeah, I forgot about him when grandma raised me up in the church. Yeah, I can trust what you're saying and let me go. And we have successful witnessing, successful street ministries, successful jail ministries. We go in with authority. We bring them out of their shame. We call them close. They have to get convicted. See how these yes, steps coming yes. back? Okay. Then we console them. We remind them of their past. Bring them to the present. Preach salvation. Romans 8. Come on in. Come on. Boom, bam. When you get out, here we are. You can find us here. 1210 Montlou. So these steps are very present day. Very present day. And so we know that even as he sent them back out, even as he sent them back out, it was a part where, okay, we were at consoling and he had to console them. Verse, and then, so after the consoling, he said, now we can have a conversation. Now we can have a conversation. So the conversation was verse 10 through 15, where he did all the talking saying about, yes, you know, you was in Goshen. Yes. You and your children. I'm sorry, not you. Yet yeah, I want you to come. Thou shalt dwell in the land of Goshen. So you can be near me. You and your children. And their children. Flocks and all your herds. Verse 10. Right? And then he started having a conversation. Talking about now how I'm going to take care of you is. This is how we're going to do this. And it says for yet. Uh, there are five years of famine. Lest thou in thy household and all that thou hast come to poverty. Well, he's saying, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. It says, verse 12, and behold your eyes, see, and the eyes of my brother Benjamin, mm -hmm. that it is my mouth that speak to you. He's talking to him. Now. And that conversation could not have been had any time earlier. It couldn't. They wouldn't believe it. Nobody could have went to them and said, I believe this is y'all's brother up here. Nobody could have convinced them of that. Joseph couldn't have even gone any earlier. He could have, I'm certain, made his way back to that land at any point and went back and tried to have the same conversation. Mm -mm. It would have been out of time, out of order. And you just have to be patient and cooperate with the plan of God. Yes. And so it says in the conversation, it says 13, and you are going to tell my father of all my glory in Egypt and of everything that you've seen. And you're going to hurriedly bring my father to me. Bring my father to me. And then he began to weep again. He began to weep again and he kissed her. And they continue to talk. I'm here to say to you, saints of God, that as you may be going through a hard time, you may be going through depression, you may be confused, your children may be acting up, your job, people on your job acting up, your spouse acting up. I'm here to tell you that God has a plan. God has a plan. And there's no need in us Giving up now. We've come too far. Race, racial tensions. We've come too far to give up now. We have to grab hold to the horns of the altar and press in in our time with the Lord and ask him, going back here, ask him for this lesson name, Lord, Give me a creative 
and transforming way yeah. to deal with the mistreatment that we're suffering. He will do that. Witty and crafty ideas, he is the author of that. And he won't withhold those ideas from us. And if you're honest and sincere about making change, if you're honest and sincere about getting to the end of God's plan, I behoove you today that if you would just sit and meditate and listen, lay out your petitions before the Lord, get your journal and start writing, that you, he will speak to you, he will speak to you, he will speak to you. But you've got to continue to live an upright life. You've got to continue to do something, but do it within the confines of righteousness. You can't just sit there, wake up every day, go to sleep. Wake up every day, eat, go to sleep. Go. No, you've got to get out, walk, start thinking, start talking, grabbing people together. You've got to be active in this plan of God. Occupied till I come. You've got to do something. Not sit and twiddle your thumb. And as you move, I'm a living witness, as you move, he will begin to speak to you. He will begin to speak to you on creative, transforming initiatives on how to react to the mistreatment and not with vengeance. And I'm going to close with this. That totally was not all I had, but I'm going to close with this. As the protests began, after George Floyd, I, I remember seeing on Facebook where people would say to the to the Christians, they would say, because uh, Christians would post about praying, and then fighters would post about fighting and protesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then there were some who wouldn't say nothing at all, and they would call them out. And I'm a true proponent of this. Let those that fight, fight. Let those that watch, watch. And let those that pray, pray. Watch and pray. And Medea say, and fight. Mm -hmm. And so do what it is you do. But do it with vengeance. Don't stop praying. What good is that? You know you call. Prayer is just talking to the Lord. But those that intercede, blood, sweat, and tears. Don't stop. Those that watch for the souls, mm -hmm. don't stop. Mm -hmm. Those that say they're going to protest, let me encourage you that you would fight with your words, that you would fight with sensible solutions, that you would fight in the higher ranks of politics and those political areas where the systemic government, I mean the systemic racism has taken hold for many years, that you would fight right. Was that not the message here on the grounds of Providence the other Sunday? Fighting right. Amen. Learn to fight right. And I believe that's a good conclusion here as we have come back around Amen. to the word of God. Learn to fight right. Joseph could have fought back. Mm -hmm. He didn't. Joseph could have done a lot of things. He didn't. But I thank God that he was humble enough to go through, to run from Potiphar's wife, to interpret the dreams and give God credit, and still to just accept where he was and begin to say, yes, I'll accept this great life you're giving me. I came out of the pit. I'll gladly help you, Potiphar. Amen. And he saw fit that he would be at the scene of revealing with his very brothers. That dream, as we say so often, I can show you better than I can tell you. Mm -hmm. I can show you better than I can tell you a whole lot of things today, too. But he, Joseph, tried to speak out of turn by telling that dream, as opposed to just saying, let me hold that, mm -hmm. and let's just see what God is going to show me. But in the end, God still had to come back around and show them what Joseph was trying to tell them. Thank you so very much for joining us today here in uh, the Sanctuary of Providence Church of God in Christ, 1210 Montlou Avenue, um, High Point, North Carolina. Drive-in service is still on. Drive-in service is still on. 
It is uh, cloudy, but it is clear outside as far as no rain. And so at 10 a.m., yes, we will drive in. Thank you so very much. Thank you again for joining us. We look to see you be blessed. And if there's any need that you have, please, please don't um, hesitate to comment on our page because we go back and we look for those prayer requests and we monitor the comments and we look and communicate with our people as they are in need online. And so we're going to close with prayer. We're going to close with prayer. Let me repeat the prayer here from the blessing. And it says, how gracious you are, our wonderful Lord. Thank you for taking us through every valley and guiding us over every mountain. We recognize your plan in our lives and we appreciate you, Lord. You are El Roy, El Roy the God who sees the future. We trust you and we love you. Help us make the mantle. Help us take the mantle of Joseph and dedicate our time and resources to helping our brothers and sisters in Africa. Bless Africa and bless Israel. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. amen.